to electromagnetism. Lesson 8. And we're now up to DC generator calcs. There's only about 3, 4 of them at most. I think you should find this reasonably interesting. So, if you look up following along in the textbook, which is always a good idea, it's section 13.6. So, here we have the circuit diagram or the schematic for a generator. So we have here a shunt wound generator and there's the shunt circuit with a rheostat so we can control the magnetic field. We have an armature which is made up of an internal resistor RA and it's 0.08 of an ohm and the battery represents the voltage that's going to be generated by our armature. Then we come out to our terminals, plus terminal and minus terminal. And then we have 0.5 of an ohm, which represents some brush resistance. And another 0.5 here representing some armature resistance. And finally, we have a load. RL and we're told that we want 400 volts across or we are getting 400 volts across our load so let's have a look what we can do with this information so let's determine some of the voltage drops so to find the load current assuming the voltage across the load is 400 volts. Now they already told us the power, so power equals volts times current, so we can transpose that. And our answer comes out at 100 amps, because we simply take the power, divide it by the voltage, and we were told we had 40,000 watts divided by 400 means that we have 100 amps being supplied by the armature into the load. Next find the voltage at the generator terminals VT when the load is at 100 amps and the load voltage is at 400 volts. Again this is just application of Ohm's law And we know the voltage is simply the resistance multiplied by the current. We know we have a resistance in total out there through the brushes and the armature of 0.1 of an ohm. We multiply that by the current. That's where this comes from, the current. And that gives us 10 volts. We simply add 10 volts to the applied voltage these two and that gives us an answer of 410 volts is the voltage we must have at the terminals to supply the 400 volts across the load and to account for the losses across the brushes etc. Next we're going to determine the voltage drop is the armatures generated EMF, EG, assuming the only losses are due to the armor brush and its resistance. So here the answer is 418 volts. So why 418? Well, we've got to take into account not only the brush resistances, but also that internal resistance of the armature. So that gives us 0.1 of an ohm plus 0.08, giving us 0.18 of an ohm, so that's where the 0.18 comes from. We simply added the 0 0.1 plus the 0 0.08 that we had. We multiply that by the current, which was the original current, it gives us 18. And we then take the 100 volts, add it to the 18, giving us an EG, we must have an EG of at least 418 volts 
to account for the supply terminal plus the voltage drops around inside the machine. So as you can see, it's reasonably straightforward Ohm's law. So generators are rated at their full load output voltage. That's the normal. Voltage regulation is the difference between the no load and the full load voltages divided by the full load values. That way we'll put it as a percentage. And the answer is simply multiplied by 100 to be able to express it as a percentage. So this is what the formula looks like. The percentage volt regulation is the volts NL or no load. That's what the NL stands for. Minus the volts full load, FL, multiplied by 100 on volts full load. So basically, it's a percentage of the difference on full load multiplied by 100. The 100 is just to get it into the form of a percentage. So as I said, NL is no load, FL is full load. So nothing like a quick little example. Here we have a shunt generator. Has an open circuit voltage of 450 volts and a full volt load of 410. Calculate the percent regulation. It's not going to be too difficult. We just list out the values that we have and what we need to find. Our formula that we just learned about on the previous slide. There it is here. Oops gone in there a bit early. Here it is here. Here's our percent regulation formula. So we simply have our 450 minus our 410 on 410 times 100 on 1. So the percent regulation is about 9.7%. So we're going to have a drop in voltage of about roughly 10% between no load and full load. That, that's what voltage regulation means. What percent voltage drop will I experience with this particular generator going from full load to no load or no load to full load, whichever way you want to think about it. So what about power loss and efficiency is the next thing. Power loss includes the copper losses, that's the I squared R losses around the machine. Mechanical losses are due to friction, wind resistance, and magnetic core losses due to hysteresis magnetic fringing and a little bit of magnetic leakage and a small amount of eddy currents are also included in the core. Therefore, the prime mover driving a DC generator has to provide sufficient power to overcome all the losses. So it has to put in more energy and mechanically than it will get out electrically. So percent efficiency, the ratio of the power out and the power input gives a measure of a machine's efficiency. So we use the symbol neuter is express a percentage. So we'll just use N because it's easy to type. That is the percentage, the N percent, or neuter percent, P out divided by P in, again, times 100, simply to move it into a percentage rather than leave it as a decimal. So let's do a quick example. We've got to find the efficiency of a generator that delivers four kilowatts out of the power of a prime mover, which had inputted 48. So we've put 48 in, but we've only got 40 out. So we've lost eight watts in losses. So the power in is 48, power out is 40 watts our percent. So from our previous slide, here's our base formula. Percent regulation is P out on P in times 100. So our 40 divided by 48 multiplied by 100, and we get an efficiency of 83.3%. So 83.3% of what we put in comes out as electrical power.
So here's our circuit again of our shunt wound DC machine, but we've put a little bit more information on it. Here's our 100 amps coming out of the armature to provide the 100 amps required to uh, supply the load. But we're also generating an extra 5 amps here to create the magnetic field that operates the machine through the field coils. Apart from that, our circuit has not changed. Well, the circuit hasn't changed, but we've now put the bad, some extra values on it. 100 amps to the load, 5 amps to supply the field coils. So, again, let's do some equations around this to find the total electrical power PT generated for 13.5. So here's our solution. The total generated power is the sum of the load power PL and the losses due to all the different uh, things around the armature, the bushes, the resistance around the inductors, etc, etc. They all consume a little bit of power. So to find the power dissipated in the armature and brush resistance, we first need to determine the total armature current. So to do that, if you noticed, we had 5 amps going to the field and 100 amps through the armature to supply the load. So our total armature current comes in at 105. But we want to know how much power that represents. How much loss do we get inside the armature? Remember, if you remember, we had 0.8 of an ohm. And power equals I squared R is going to be the easiest way to find it. So if we take the I squared, which is 105, we just got from here. And we multiply it by 0.8. That's going to equal 882 watts of losses just in the armature. So now the, fa the, the power dissipated in the uh, feeder is found in a similar way in which the feeder current equals the load current. So the amount of current going out in the feeder is just 100 amps. And if you remember, we had those little resistors at 2.05s, making a total of 0.1. And of course, we can go I squared R again. So this time, 100 squared multiplied by 0.1. And that gives us 1,000 watts or 1 kilowatt of feeder losses. So we've lost 882 watts in the armature. The feeder cables from the armature to the load, we've lost 1,000 watts. So the power now required to operate the field coils, and if you remember, we had five amps operating the field coil that produced the magnetic field. And we also had 410 volts across the field. So again, power is equal to I times V, which you've got down here. So our five multiplied by 410 volts, we end up with another little over 2 kilowatts of losses just to operate the field. So there's all our basic losses. If we add all of those up, we're going to end up with 10. power to the load, 40 kilowatts. Power in the armature, 822. Power in the feeder, 1,000. And power to the feeder, 2,050. So the total power will be the 40 plus the 82 plus the 100 plus the 2,005. So the total power in, we had to put in 43, nearly 44 kilowatts to get 40 out. So we've ended up with a power in at 
very close to 44 kilowatts so we can have a power out equal to 40 kilowatts so basically we've got about 4 kilowatts of losses in our machine to be able to carry all the peripherals of the field and all the losses around inside the machine so let's have a bit of a summary of the lesson DC machines motors or generators have virtually the same construction so there's very very little difference you can have a DC machine a generator can be a motor and a motor can be a generator in the DC world the frame and pole pieces in a generator provide a path for the magnetic field and that is created by the field coils the field interacts with the rotating armature to induce a voltage in the armature coils that's how the generator works so the field creates a flux and the rotor then cuts the flux or the armature cuts the flux the alternating armature current is converted by the commutator back to direct current so that's what a commutator does it simply is a switch that switches the load backwards and forwards making sure it's the currents flowing in the same direction all the time a lap wound armature has many parallel paths and suits a high current low voltage machine so that's the best use for that so if you have an application that has high current but relatively low voltage that's the best way for that the lap wound a wave wound armature has two parallel paths and suits a high voltage low current machine the magnetic field in a generator can be produced by permanent magnets for smaller machines and or field coils supplied by either an external DC source or by the generator itself and if it's going to do it by the generator itself it will need some residual magnetism to get that field up and running self-excited generators can be shunt where the field coils are in parallel with the armature they can be in series which means the armature current flows through the field coils or they could be in compound which combines both shunt and field coils together generators are rated by their output current at their rated output voltage remembering that we'll have to put more power in than we'll ever get out because of the losses inside them if the direction of rotation is reversed self excitation machine counters its residual magnetism and cannot produce an output voltage now there's a trick for beginners so if you get the rotation on a DC machine the wrong way it will cancel out its own excitation and won't ever build it up to restart the mechanical energy required to drive a generator is proportional to but greater than the electrical energy being delivered by the generator caused by of course the losses a DC generator has a resistive I squared R losses has core losses or what we would call magnetic effect losses and it has mechanical losses like friction in the bearings and windage as the rotor spins resistive losses are those due to the resistance in series with the armatures generated EMF EG and the output terminals of the generator DC machines motors and generators operate at a certain efficiency which is the ratio of the power delivered by the machine the power out and the power required to drive the machine the power in the percent voltage regulation of a DC generator is a measure of how much its output voltage drops under load so once it loads up the voltage is going to drop a power mover driving a DC generator has to overcome the opposing magnetic fields created by the armature and the generators main field because that's what a generator is and that's what it does 
The armature field strength increases with the load current requiring more mechanical power from the prime mover. So there you have it, there's electromagnetism lesson 8, just some calculations around the machine and a little bit of a revision over the last couple of lessons.